like to call the meeting of the Town of Atherton City Council to order on July 17th at 7 p.m. Uh, we start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So we will stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So tonight we have uh, the great pleasure of uh, a swearing in of two new police sergeants and it will be administered by our chief of police, Ed Flint. Please come forward. Thank you very much. Madam Mayor, members of the council, Atherton residents, ladies and gentlemen and guests, uh, it is indeed an extreme pleasure of mine uh, to reintroduce uh, one of our new sergeants, uh, Sergeant Chris Vigil. And Chris, would you come up here? And a new lateral sergeant from San Jose Police Department, Alfredo Bernardici. Just give you a short bio uh, on Chris Vigil and Alfredo. Uh, sergeant Chris Vigil was born in Santa Clara and raised in Mountain View. After graduating from high school, Chris enlisted in the United States Army. Chris, Chris was trained as a cavalry scout and assigned to the 1st Armored Division out of Germany. He did two, two deployments to Iraq and was involved in combat operations in Baghdad, uh, Kabbalah, and Ramadi. After being honorably discharged from the United States Army as a sergeant, Chris attended the South Bay Regional Police Academy in pursuit of his lifelong dream of becoming a police officer. During the academy, Chris was hired by the Santa Cruz Police Department, where he then served for approximately six years. While at the Santa Cruz Police Department, Chris was recognized for his distinguished service and was recognized by MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers, and was honored in 2010, 2011, and 2012. Chris served as a field training officer, a peer counselor, and a member of the department's Distinguished Honor Guard. On November 15, 2012, Chris graduated from the American <coughs> Military Academy University with an Associate Arts degree in General Studies and is currently taking classes in pursuit of his bachelor's degree. In December of 2012, the Atherton Police Department was fortunate enough to get Chris to come over to our department as a lateral and we have been absolutely pleased with his performance. Uh, he participated in our most re recent sergeant's exam and did quite well, as you can see. He's standing up here tonight with sergeant stripes on. So it really is an honor to have Chris join the team. And I will uh, say something else. Chris has already garnered a lot of support from residents and has received several accommodations and, uh, from residents. So outstanding work, Chris, and really glad you're here. Second, but not last or least, is Sergeant Alfredo Garducci. He was born in San Francisco in 1971 and spent much of his life growing up in the city and on the peninsula. Alfredo met his wife Maria in 1992 and they were married in 1998. Alfredo earned an AA degree in criminal justice from Poloni College prior to joining the Pacifica Police Department in 1993 where he spent one and a half years. He then transferred to Santa, Pla uh, Santa, Santa uh, San Jose Police Department in December of 1994. While at the Santa, San Jose Police Department, Alfredo had an opportunity to work patrol, the main lobby by, uh, bilingual officer position, the cruise enforcement detail, downtown service division, field training officer, narcotics enforcement team, metro, and motors. As an officer, Alfredo was a certified defensive tactics instructor and was an assistant range instructor at the Pistol Shotgun School. During his tenure as an officer, Alfredo had an opportunity to attend several schools to include the Blackwater Training Center for Hostage Rescue Team School, the LAPD SWAT and Hostage Rescue Team School, the San Francisco PD Tactical School, and several schools <coughs> 
presented by Louis Allward, Arbuck, I'm sorry. Alfredo was promoted to the rank of sergeant in February of 2007 and was assigned to the patrol division for a short time before being reassigned to the special enforcement team. He was later assigned to the pre-processing center prior to being assigned to the gang investigation unit. During his assignment to the gang investigation unit, Alfredo was selected to be part of a federal task force known as the FBI Safe Streets Gang Task Force. Alfredo's final assignment at the San Jose Police Department was <clears throat> the court liaison unit where he managed a staff of 15 people. Alfredo speaks Italian and Spanish fluently. He received his BS degree in 2012 from the Union Institute and University in Criminal Justice Management and is currently enrolled in a master's program with Fort Hayes State University. He is a co-founder of the South Bay Gang Alliance and creator of the San Jose Child Death Support Group. He was responsible for implementing a Bureau of Investigations Command Center and training program prior to leaving San Jose PD. Alfredo earned three department distinguished awards for for day-to-day -day excellence in his duties as a police sergeant. Alfredo and Maria have three children, Kiara, age 11, Olivia, age 6, and Luca, age 3. Alfredo would like to thank his wife and children for their support and for coming tonight, and he especially wants to thank the council and the residents of uh, Atherton for allowing him to serve here. So now we're going to administer the oath. So if you face me and raise your right hand, repeat after me. I state your name. I come straight over to you. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm that I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Upon which I am about to enter. Congratulations. <laughs> Maria, I guess you're going to pin Alfredo, and I'm going to pin Chris. officers here by the side of it. I'm very impressed. And I'm also very impressed with the fact that you speak Spanish and Italian. I think that's a, a very big plus. So uh, we hope to you have a long career here. So uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, sir. So we just want to also say welcome and also congratulations as well to uh, an internal uh, promotion as well as a, a nice transfer with some great experience. Both of you have great experience and, and uh, really uh, add a lot to the department. So um, thank you for joining and thank you for uh, really for all of our police officers for sticking with us and, 
and, and working with us and uh, being really a real part of the community, not just employees. You know, we love to get the microphone, so I'm just <laughs> going to echo, and I thank you, and just be safe. Okay. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. So we'll let the uh, room clear of all of your friends and family. Thank you. You have many, many friends and family. It's so great to see all of you supporting your, um, your friends, your colleagues. It's just it's really very so we'll move on to the public comment section. Uh, this is the portion of the meeting for members of the public who wish to address the council on any matter that is not on the agenda tonight. However, if because of your time constraints you cannot stay through the rest of the agenda and you want to speak on an item, just remember that these will be your three minutes. So, while it's nice to know who's speaking, it's not a requirement that you give your name or address, but it would be nice to know just for the record. And then I see that we have uh, members of the public coming to the podium now. There's one. There is one. I'm Philip Lively, 24 Hawthorne. I'm going to speak about number 15 and hope that this is a four-star event and that you would give number 15 the top bill and I hope you think it deserves and not make everybody wait all through the meeting to get to the meeting. So please consider moving up to near top building if you would please. Thank you very much. Is there any other member of the public that would like to speak at this time? Okay. Uh, I'll close public comment. We do have an urgency item uh, that has been uh, brought to our attention and I'll uh, need to address uh, it right now and turn it over to city manager to, dis uh, to uh, describe what it is. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. The urgency item is something that came to light uh, after the posting of this agenda that we need to get uh, the council's clarification on uh, adoption of a resolution for candidates' uh, statements uh, and the process by which we uh, move those ahead. So, for the council's purview, that's the item. Okay. Um, so, I think that we will uh, uh, call for a motion to accept this urgency item as uh, an item that we're going to put on our agenda. And if um, it's okay, I will um, hear it. <coughs> so moved. Yes. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? <coughs> so we'll put the urgency item um, at the... Um, We'll put the emergency item right before the uh, the selection of candidate uh, for city council, item number 15. 14 and a half. 14 and a half, okay. So, um, Mr. Lively, you preempted me because I was going to say that before proceeding, I'd had a, a request from a member of the public today to move up item number 15, which is the selection of candidate for city council to earlier in the meeting. So if it's okay with members of the council, may we move item 15 up before item number 13 at the beginning of the regular agenda. That would be after the consent calendar. Would that also move 14 and a half up to right, right before? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, is that okay with everyone? Good. Okay. So we'll go on down our agenda to item number five: report out of closed session. City attorney, or city attorney was not in the closed session. Madam Mayor, members of council, uh, the city council met regarding. Uh, conference with labor negotiator uh, pursuant to government code section 54957.6. Uh, they considered items, gave direction to negotiators, no other actions taken. Thank you very much. Um, so, item number six is the city manager's report. Uh, George? Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. You have the written report before you, and you've got staff here this evening to answer any questions on their specific departmental reports. 
Uh, I will make note of the first item within there, the selection of the council candidate. That will be basically the staff report when you get to that item later on this evening. Uh, when you talk about the council member appointments as another later item on this meeting's agenda, the JPA is looking for a council member to serve the SPWMA board. Uh, we've also got uh, information about the completion of the tennis courts and the bulletin board at the tennis courts. Uh, this resurfacing was recently completed. We're also looking to do the handball courts. Uh, and then the bulletin board was refurbished. Uh, um, the Cape Seal project, as was mentioned here, the Cape Seal project is not complete yet. Uh, the contractor is still continuing to do some cleanup items before they submit uh, their work to us for substantial completion of the punch list. There's still a lot of checklist items that they're getting done and clean up. Uh, they have entered the liquidated damages phase of the contract, so that's day by day uh, being impounded toward them. So that's the manager's report. Does any member of the public have a comment on the city manager's report that they'd like to speak to right now? How about any member of the yeah, council? I, I would just say that, you know, Inter Mountain, who I guess were the contractors for the streets, uh, I've had several people talk to me pretty unhappy with that. So I think maybe uh, that could be noted. So when the bids come up the next time, that's something I think we should take into account. Well, certainly. Okay. Uh, I was just going to say, I thought that uh, what's happened at the tennis courts is great, and the uh, new courts are looking very good. And um, so thank you for the quick uh, activity, activity there, because they only took the courts out of uh, action for a couple days, which is terrific. No comments. Um, I just uh, have a couple things regarding um, your uh, information about town drainage connections. Yes. Um, how, I wasn't aware that we could uh, connect our drainage to the town's drainage system. Uh, are, are many uh, residents connected? And if so, if we wanted to get connected, or anybody else wanted to get connected, how would we do that? Well, perhaps Mike can speak to that particular item. I do know that there is a fee within the fee resolution that you can pay to be connected. But <laughs> Mike? And I think where this came up was a specific request um, and it had to do with the Stockbridge project um, earlier. And as part of that project, what we did was um, any property that had an underground drainage system that daylighted into the public street, we connected that to the new storm to be was installed. And so that was done as part of the project. And was, I, think, I think question and there were some questions by some residents who did not have an existing underground drainage, wondering why they weren't connected to that same storm drain system. So I think that was one of the contexts of how this came up. No, I, 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 Mike, I asked about it because, as you know, there was that one resident that brought it to years of my attention, and I noticed it on the fee schedule. So I asked the city manager, um, did we allow that because it looked like we had a fee, either we need to take off the fee schedule or you could get the data on is it, is it still possible because of that circumstance with that one resident that, that brought it up. So, so I appreciate the city manager making that clear and, and so we got that out. So appreciate it. Okay. Um, re again, regarding the tennis courts, uh, I noticed uh, in the uh, Athertonian, we're talking, you know, that came out, right, about tennis keys that are available uh, to make it uh, aware that uh, tennis keys are available. And I think that um, advertising that, making people more aware that tennis keys are available, maybe we could do some graphics and put it uh, a banner on Marsh Road as an action item if we could do that. To, uh, stimulate some interest now that the tennis courts are uh, working, looking good. Um, another thing that was in your manager's report was about the roundabout at Alameda de las Pulgas. And since this matter had already been before the Transportation Committee and also before Council last year, where both uh, bodies um, were in agreement that staff uh, do the RFP, prepare the uh, RFP, I guess $2,500. Uh, was approved to prepare the RFP, um, and it got dropped through the cracks or dropped down to the uh, low priority area. Um, I just don't know why we can't uh, just put it back up on uh, you know the mid or priority list 
without going through all the rigmarole again. I mean, it, uh, there's two issues at play here. One is it, it's not not only did it get dropped, it's not in the 13-14 budget. So we actually need a budget amendment to put the $2,500 back in the 13-14 budget mm -hmm. to prepare the RFP. That takes council action to do. Okay. So if it's the council's desire that we do that, I can bring that back in August for consideration. My suggestion here was to, to make sure, and I spoke with a member of the Transportation Committee, to make sure that the Transportation Committee still thought this was a high priority item, mm -hmm. move it through the committee again, mm -hmm. Get them to recommend back to the council that yes, we still think this is a priority council you need to consider. So that was could, the suggestion. Could we just bring it back to council in August, just for council discussion? Oh, I, I, Do we need to? I th I think it's you know the analysis of of a uh, traffic light versus a roundabout, which might require more land. I think is something that should be debated. You know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, open disclosure. You know, as you know, I. I didn't think a, a roundabout was the, the ultimate solution. Um, and uh, you know, the member that keeps bringing it up is actually got on the transportation committee, so we should be able to get some of his colleagues to support him okay. for us we, before we take it up. Okay. I mean, this has come up many times mm -hmm. in the past, and at least in the past when we've looked at it without getting into any detail, there were some major issues about putting that roundabout. I mean, I think in general it looks like a good idea, but the cost mm -hmm. when we looked at it before was pretty substantial, actually. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, okay. I think that, well, so <clears throat> the general consensus is that we're not going to make any uh, future agenda item on this <laughs> until he goes through the loops again. I, I think that what George, you're saying is, is that bring it back to the Transportation Committee, see if it can make it through the discussion of the Transportation Committee. If it does, then it comes back out to Council if it's yeah. recommended by the Transportation Committee. That's correct. Okay. All right. Um, that's it. So um, item number seven on our agenda is the Community Organizational Roundtable Report. There is none. Uh, we'll go on to the consent calendar for uh, items eight through 12. Um, uh, just a, a point of uh, uh, to note is that there are no minutes of last month's meeting. So I uh, assume that those minutes will be uh, brought forward in our August meeting. Yes. Okay. So in case you're looking for minutes of last month's meeting, there are none in the uh, consent uh, calendar. So typically items on the consent calendar are routine in nature. Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, open it up to the public or any members of the public want to pull any of the consent items, items number 8 through 12. Any members of the council? I have a couple comments on item number 12. Okay. Anybody else? Shall we just take your comments now? Sure. Uh, I reviewed these with the city manager, so, um, and he suggested that we just make a quick comment on it. Okay. Uh, first thing is I, I just wanted to make it clear that, um, and, and I think for the elimination of doubt, with regards to any sort of uh, colleague's letter that, that those things get action within within a two month period of time, and uh, my reading of the of the write up was that that needed to just be crisped up a little bit. So we don't have people passing colleagues' letters and the organization who heard it voted to put it on the agenda, and then as some of us know, some of those items seem to have went away from either getting to the council or, or getting on an agenda uh, in the past. Um, and also, I wanted to bring up, uh, I know we had the off-site where this led to some of the discussions with the changes we've made here, and um, I thought that we had decided that we would have one council member per, as an advisory slash liaison per committee, and, and I didn't see that specifically stated herein. Uh, or have any sort of comments that said that, you know, unless agreed otherwise, there'd only be one. So I think so that... you're talking about in section number three, yes. clarification city council members as liaisons instead of voting yeah. members, and you want to... Uh, well, we said there'd be only one, so it's not an overwhelming thing. I've right. got some suggested language in having spoken to the council member, we're going to maybe we can just add in there if the council's fine with it. Sure. Uh, with respect to the colleague's memo, change that last sentence to read, 
the item shall be added to the next agenda or a specific designated agenda by a majority vote of the committee. That says it's either the next one or if they say we're not going to meet on this one for three months. Like, like, like a budget item. Right. Right. We'll bring this up next year when we do the budget. Yep. Yes. And then in section three for appointment of voting members to commissions or committees, add the following to that section. For each committee or commission, unless otherwise directed by the council, one city council member shall be appointed as a primary liaison and one as an alternate. Members shall coordinate attendance to ensure appropriate representation. And for the people that are listening to it, you know, the purpose here is to have the community participate in the committees as opposed to have the council more or less drive them. Yes. Good. That's what it says. Okay. So, um, with those changes in mind, can I call for a motion to approve the consent calendar? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So now we're going to go on to the regular agenda, and we are moving uh, item number 14 and a half, which is our urgency item, to uh, this because it has to do with the um, adoption of resolution requiring candidates be charged a deposit to cover the cost of publication for statement of qualifications. Do you want to, uh, Teresa, do you want to give this uh, report? Uh, sure, if you have their written report, this is uh, standard for the <coughs> election. It's just um, setting the cost of uh, candidate statements, which is always $400. Okay. And then we usually limit the uh, publication to 200 words rather than 400. If they wanted, uh, are we going to decide to just limit the two to 200 uh, and not give the uh, candidate an option to pay additional money? The candidate doesn't get the option. City oh. Council sets that policy. Okay. We usually limit it to 200 mm -hmm. to keep the overall election cost. Yeah. yeah. But the candidate has to pay that. Correct. Um, any discussion? From I think council? less is more. 200 is good. <laughs> less is more. Any other discussion? Any public discussion input on that particular policy? I'll bring it back to council. Can I get a motion to accept this uh, urgency item resolution? We move. A second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No opposed. That motion passes. So now we will go to um, item number 15. And item number 15 is to my item 15, is the uh, selection of candidate for city council, and it, the staff report has been brought by brought to us by uh, George Roderick, city manager, and Teresa. I just want to make a point that for transparency with the public, this item has been brought back to council tonight to make sure that all members of the public are fully informed and fully understand what council's options are and how council intends to proceed with this uh, filling of the vacancy. At the end of the meeting last Thursday night, uh, uh, I got feedback from some members of the public that they were unclear as to what was going to happen next. We had uh, uh, voted to hold a special election in November to fill the vacancy, but you know, how is that going to look? So tonight is a time for discussion, action by council, and direction by council to staff and to the public as to what exactly council intends to do and to lay out the process. Um, so city manager, Teresa? You, you pretty much articulated the report. One, one uh, finer point, uh, since the July 3rd study session and the July 11th meeting, we've kind of clarified the timeline. Uh, of which the council has to actually appoint. It remains that 60-day window. You called the election, but you've only got 60 days to either cancel the election and appoint. You can't appoint after that period of time. Okay. And that's August 30th. Okay. Um, so I'd like to open it up to the public uh, if they want to talk about uh, this um, process at this time. We're not uh, actually holding open interviews necessarily, but it's certainly up to you if you've got, you've got you know, three minutes if you'd like to make a, make a statement to council, then I'll bring it back to council to uh, discuss and deliberate. Open up for public comment at this time. Yes, sir. John Ruggiero, 10 Stockbridge. 
At the last meeting where you had seven candidates and your people voted, the first vote was uh, two votes for me, one for another candidate, one person abstained on the council. Basically, I got two-thirds of the votes out of three. And now we're going through this whole hassle now and then. And if other, if other people are going to be brought in now, fine, have an election. But why are we wasting the citizens' time, the candidates' time, with this redundant second meeting? I don't understand it. And uh, I also go further. If you want, I'll take the job of, uh, Alan, of uh, Jerry Carlson with the proviso I never ran for any office again in this town to fill the, 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 uh, the uh, rest of his uh, tenure and save the town a lot of money in an election and save the other candidates from fighting in, a, in an election very close. Thank you very much. Any other member of the public? I'm Mike Child on 35 Ridgeview Drive. I think you've got a choice, obviously, between running a special election or picking among the seven candidates who've applied. They're all very good candidates. I think there's the public has voted on one of those candidates, which was Greg Conlon, who received over 1,300 votes in the election. If there had been a third open spot, he would have been elected. And I think he's the only one of the seven candidates who actually ran and has had to have his views in front of the public. So I would think the fair thing to do would be to nominate and, you know, and select him if you decide to go that route. I think the other people are all wonderful, but they didn't run. The public never had a chance to vote. Um, Greg, I think, was a couple hundred votes behind <coughs> Barry and was right in there. So I think he would be the, the best choice. Thank you. Any other members of the public would like to speak? Bob Berger, uh, I'm a little bit confused as to what is happening. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, are you going to rethink and vote for the people who apply in the open position? Mm -hmm. Is that what's happening? Yeah. Sure, I can articulate this. At the uh, study session on July 3rd, the council asked <coughs> specifically what are our options. You know, we have a deadline to call the election and or appoint. Um, what happens if we call the election? Can we still appoint at some later date? You know, well, and it's true, they have the option to appoint all the way up until that 60-day window. Okay. And they, they called the election just because of meeting the deadline of November. So because that's been an option, uh, when I received, you know, a feedback from a council member asking, you know, if and when the council may consider this again, it's not a management issue, it's a council issue, so I put it on the agenda, not only to allow them that opportunity to discuss whether they wanted to appoint or not, but also <coughs> to give staff some feedback, do you want to see this item again, do you never want to see it again in the 60-day window, are you done, have you called the election, just let us know. Otherwise, if any council member said, when are we going to talk about it again within that window, it's going to show up on the next agenda. Okay, so there could be uh, continued discussion about the seven candidates then. Yeah, it's only unless the, they cut it off. It's only the seven that have applied, correct? I know. You, can, you can technically appoint anyone. At this point. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. We're going to try to make it clear, I think, all the options and, and have um, a legal opinion about what our options are. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Amy Fay, and I just want to recap the clarification so as I understand as of what is it July 15th the uh, 60 days is running till when we can call or appoint or July 1st July 1st okay yeah. so we're already sort of burning through those days and the other thing is um, that in the last uh, meeting you the special meeting you had there was a choice between just two candidates but now all candidates can be re are being reconsidered, and they could be reconsidered tonight. It's not just a question of voting for one of the two people. Um, so, and if somebody else wanted to enter into that process as a candidate, according to Mr. Rodericks, they could. So this discussion could continue till the August meeting with other candidates being considered, I guess. And, and I just, just hope we don't end up being like Congress. <laughs> Thank you. I hope no, not to. So maybe we should um, kind of uh, put a pause in our public comment period and uh, have our legal opinion uh, 
so that we can kind of go over our options as we know them today uh, and you know what our legal boundaries are so that everybody understands what the playing field is. Would you like to? Uh, Madam Mayor, I can, I can kind of go through. I think uh, the city manager kind of hit the highlights. The, the, the law, uh, the government code allows the city council two options within 60 days from the vacancy, which was July 1st. You can either fill it by appointment or call for a special election. Um, we suggested or allowed the, the, the council the option of setting the special election ahead of the end of the 60 days, but we believe that, that, that the option to appoint still exists during that 60 day period. So anytime between now and August 30th, the city council could in fact, either at the next regular meeting or at a special meeting called for that purpose, could in fact appoint somebody to fill the remainder of the, the, the term. Um, th there's some confusion about um, could the city council do other things such as appoint somebody um, only until a special election could be held? Um, the, an the short answer is no. Because <coughs> the law allows for that, but I think it really allows for that as a policy ahead of time because it requires an ordinance. The ordinance would take about 90 days to become effective. Um, the 90 days would be after the 60 days is already run, so it wouldn't make any sense. Um, it wouldn't have made any sense on day one because that same 90 days would have expired. Uh, um, and, and that section of the government code is really talking about um, the town could, in its city code, in the, in, in the town's um, municipal code, could set forth several uh, choices of several policies. I mean, you, could, you could establish um, the uh, uh, interim appointment until an election, you could automatically say there has to be an election, there is no appointment, um, and I think there's one other. Um, bottom line is that we really don't have time to do any of those. So it's really between now and August 30th, the city council could, uh, could decide to appoint somebody. I think what the city manager has said, and I think it makes a lot of sense, is um, with a 2-2 council, if, we're, if, it, if it is the council's prerogative to say, look, let's just go to the election because you know it, it'll save a lot of agony up here. Um, let's just do that. That would be fine. Um, on the other hand, if the city council wanted to keep open the option to appoint somebody, that's also fine. But oh, only during that 60 days. Right. Oh. So based on those parameters and that explanation, um